Okay, so these are the new units. These are the ones we've talked about ever since Darren uncovered it back in Taiwan. And we're gonna take a little look at these devices. Hopefully throughout this video, you will get the sort of panning shots that we did prior to this. But without further ado, let's talk about this first one. This is easily the biggest unit that we wanted to talk about of all. This is the HD 6400. It features an Intel um, Silver CPU, that's the 4110 that we talked about before. That's an eight core processor. But let's face it, the really important thing about this device is that this is a 4U 60 by rack mount, which is insane. It takes um, 3.5 inch media bay, uh, drives and they slot load straight into the top here. You can see here the trays themselves, they're plastic at the moment because this is still a prototype. And I, do th I don't think this is going to be the final version of this device when it is finally revealed to you guys. But let's be honest, we're probably looking more than likely at a 2020 mid-year to even end-of-year release of something like this. On the rear of the device, and hopefully you've got that footage on screen now, you, there is two dedicated SSD bays. I'm not even going to try to get that back in there anymore. Um, there are two dedicated SSD bays that at the moment look like they're going to be SATA, but because this is a prototype, there's no interface in the rear of the device to let us know what that is. Also, it's got fiber channel card pre-installed, but again, we don't know if that's what it's going to be like in the end, and I'm sorry to be so repetitious, but this device here, which is going to arrive with between 32 and 512 um, gigabytes, of DDR4 um, memory, that's UDIM as well, ECC, is an absolute behemoth. I'm told that they had to get two people just to lift this thing into this auditorium. Now, next up, we've got the flash station. I'm not gonna to talk too much about the flash station because we've already covered this device in previous videos, as well as during the summer over in Taipei. Let's move on to another interesting rack mount. Next up, this device here that I'm using as a fantastically expensive mic stand is the SA3200D. It is a SAS based alternative to that dual core controller that we've seen before. But whereas that dual controller was active active, this one is active passive, which is very, very important because that means rather than having the two processors working together, it means that these two processors can be used in a redundant array, one to support the other. So again, this is a SAS-based SAS alternative, and hopefully on screen, we've got those reverse shots that I took earlier on to give you some idea about this device. But the controllers themselves will be in, uh, delivered in this system here, which has got their own dedicated CPU inside, an Intel Xeon, of course. And on top of that, we've got its own dedicated four lanes of memory. And on the rear of the device, we've got copper-based 10 GBE. And we've got a fiber port there that's a SAS port, really, I should say. And that's utilized for the expansion devices, as well as two more LAN ports there on the rear. And there's two of these inside this device running together to give you a completely redundant system in the event of a problem. I'm hoping the mic is close enough here. It is quite a wide area to work with. And we have a whole pile of rack mounts over there. Let's move over from that into something a little bit more familiar and a little bit more user friendly for you home users. Which brings me to these desktop devices here. Now the two on the end, we're not really gonna talk about because we've already mentioned them on the channel. One of them being, of course, the brand new DS620 Slim, and the other one being that great little affordable 419 Slim with the two LAN ports. What I'm gonna talk about is these two devices here. Now these are still very early development devices, and even these don't have the ports on them. These are just display models. But this is the ds 120 J. This is the new series of one bay J series devices, and this one arrives with a dual core marble CPU, which I'm still looking for confirmation whether it's the same, better or worse than its predecessor. But what I will say is it arrives with twice as much memory at 512 megabytes of DDR3. Now, that device, of course, is aimed hugely at more budget users overall, but this device here, still budget, does take things a little bit further forward. Arriving, this is the DS420J that we've already talked about on NASCAR Plus and the YouTube channel, and this arrives with the Realtek CPU that we all know and love and have seen several times. That is the J4, and the CPU, and that is the Realtek RTD1296, a 4K transcoding enabled ARM 64-bit processor, which is pretty good news for a number of you out there that are looking to buy a budget NAS that were a little bit cheesed off last time, not getting hold of that CPU. Now, once again, the device itself is just a display model. There are no ports. I'll bring that forward, as you can see. So there's not a lot of points showing you that too close. Hopefully, the 
to round videos have kicked off there. But again, we're hoping this is going to arrive at the same sort of price point as its predecessor, and it arrives with one gig of DDR4 memory. Now, thanks to that CPU, we are going to see performance in things like drive for that great little client. And when we did the bench testing of this device and some of its other more contemporary and cost-effective fellows, we did see performance in things like Moments and, of course, a number of the video applications as well. But you can forget, forget about things like Plex transcoding on this, although it will support Plex generally. Now we're going to wrap things up here, we've got lots more videos to do with the software still to come, but otherwise thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got any questions, do visit below and I'll answer as many as I can along with the Synology team here, but I'll see you next time.